Hey guys, I'm back to explain to you what to do for your assignment number two called signed a syllabus. If you take a look at your ELA week one slides, it is located on slide number 12. Um, it's always best that you look at your slides in presentation mode. So if you notice my cursors right here, I'm going to click present. And the reason I'm doing that is because it makes it easier to click on the links um, within the slide. Um, the arrow right here, it says click here. So I'm going to come over here and put my cursor over top of the, the icon for Google Forms. I'm going to click on it. And it's going to take me to what my assignment number two is. Assignment number two is to read the syllabus um, and with your your parents or your guardian fill out um, the information at the, the end of the syllabus and essentially sign it to say that you understand what your expectations are for English Language Arts 9. So I'm going to just take the time and read through it because the print is kind of small. So just have your listening ears on. And then once I'm done, I will list the information that your parents and guardians um, and yourself need to include. And then you can just submit it and it'll it'll shoot it to my email and I'll be able to give you guys credit for it. So it's important to note that the curriculum is subjected to change based on federal Hawking local school districts remote learning policy. Um, my directions are to please review the syllabus and that you guys receive credit for completion. Um, so yeah, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, you just, it's just something that you have to do. So page one. So again, this is English Language Arts 9. Um, I'm your teacher, Ms. Hawk. You guys know that already. Your course description is this. This course demands that you challenge yourself as a reader and writer. You will be expected to read closely, summarize, and analyze both, both informational text and literature. As you read a variety of literature over the course of the semester, you will learn vocabulary, grammar, spelling, and writing styles specific to each genre, and will practice those skills through assignments each day. Upon completion of the course, you will have the language skills you need in order to move forward as a competent, confident communicator. So your reading and write, writing assignments, the large ones throughout the semester, um, are as follows. Uh, we'll do a short story unit. Within that short story unit, you will read um, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell, and The Scarlet Abyss by James Hurst. Um, depending on whether we come back um, and do full, fully in class learning or not, um, depends on whether we will have the opportunity to read Romeo and Juliet. My hope is that we can, but if we if we do stay online, it's not um, a reading text that we'll be able to do remotely. You'll read of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck, and if you notice, uh, listed are just some more informational texts. Uh, you'll write three essays for English and Language Arts 9. You'll write two literary analysis papers. One will be over a short story of your choice that we read. Um, one of them will be over Romeo and Juliet, again, if we come back to school um, promptly. And then at the end of the semester, I will teach you how to write an argumentative paper. Um, and that, again, will be student choice as well. Your final for this course will be a how-to speech. It's one of the most fun um, projects that you'll do as a freshman at Federal Hawking. A lot of kids look forward to it, and I'll explain it more in the future. Some expectations that I have as a teacher for my students is that even though, even though that you guys are online, I still expect you to virtually come to class prepared, use your class time well um, to complete all assignments to the best of your ability, to set challenging goals and to work to reach them, to ask for help when you are struggling. Um, number five says treat others with respect and be supportive of their efforts to learn. Some required materials, these are things that will be helpful um, for you in order to complete the course. Um, a composition notebook would be helpful, um, having pencils handy, a two pocket folder, and some loose leaf paper. All right, if you scroll down, or I'm scrolling down for you, on page two of the syllabus, there are some very basic learning targets uh, posted. Obviously, as an English language arts teacher, my goal is to 
support my learners in achieving and mastering all of the learning targets or all the, the academic standards that the state has provided. However, I've listed six learning targets that I know are vital or absolutely necessary in order for students to move on to 10th grade English. Of course, there are many, many more that are important, um, but these six are absolutely vital and important, um, and I can't send you necessarily on to 10th grade English without the mastery of these six skills. Um, so just take a look at those. I'll give you a second. Take a look at those, read those, skim through them. Now moving on to the section about grades. Um, your grade as a ninth grade English um, student will be based on your appropriate use of class time, participation, your in-class activities, completion of assignments, and your demonstration of the application of techniques presented in the mini lessons. Um, my hope is that you also have the ability um, to demonstrate growth from what you demonstrated when you first came into ninth grade English and um, your abilities at the very end of the semester. So some important information, um, students enrolled in this course will need to earn a passing grade in both courses. So in order to pass English Language Arts 9, you also have to pass Mrs. Wright's American Studies 9. So what that basically means is, is if you fail my class, um, unfortunately you have to also retake Ms. Wright's American, Study, American Studies 9 class. So just keep that in mind. Um, so I am really looking forward to this, this school year. I know it's going to be a little bit challenging at first. Um, I'm learning for the first time in my life how to teach virtually or remotely online. Um, as well as you guys are learning how to be successful learners online as well. So just know that I'm a super flexible teacher. I'm doing my best to um, make things engaging for you, incorporating videos and links and GIFs and things like that. But um, if we work together, I think everyone's going to be successful. Everyone will earn a passing grade, locate the knowledge that they need, and you'll be able to move on to integrate English next year. Um, if you notice, I listed my email and the school phone number. The school phone number is 740-662-6691, and my school email is rhawk at fhlancers.com. So if you go below, this is uh, the part where you guys have some responsibility. You need to type in student name, the parent guardian name. I want to know which way is the easiest um, to contact you. Is that by phone, by text, or by email? When is the best time to contact your parent guardian regarding your school performance? So let me know, like, does mom or dad or grandma who watches you, do they work 9 to 5? Um, if you write something like that, that lets me know that after 5 o'clock is the best time to call. What is your parent's phone number? What is your parent's email? Um, second to last question says, in your experience, what is your internet access like at home? So you can include comments like, um, our internet access is great, except for when uh, multiple people are watching YouTube videos. You can put, um, internet is not reliable. Internet is very reliable. reliable. You can uh, include information about like your data caps. So if you only have like five gigabytes of data, if you have 10, if it's unlimited. Um, Obviously, that just helps me understand what kind of issues we might run into. So the more accurate and the more information I have about that, the better I'll be able to accommodate um, you guys and when you're like turning in your assignments and stuff. And then lastly, um, this is mostly like for um, parents and guardians, but it says, is there anything you would like to share about your child that you think would help me best understand your child's educational needs? So, for example, if there are any kind of um, medical needs at home, allergies, if there are um, certain circumstances regarding the home life, like is mom and dad newly divorced, or does child live with mom but spend um, weekends at dad's, or vice versa, does dad have custody and mom only sees the child once a month, anything like that. Those aren't those aren't used uh, for any kind of judgment standpoints, but it just it helps me understand. Um, who's helping who's helping the child and um, any kind of other factors that, that might influence the child's success. Um, 
Also, I have listed to maybe give me some information about your child's academic or social concerns. So if you're nervous about English, if English hasn't been your child's strong subject, you can include that there as well. So if you notice um, in purple, it says submit. So if you hit submit, it's automatically going to send me um, some sort of notification saying that the student has submitted the assignment and then you get your 10 points. Um, for week one, assignment number two. If you guys have any questions, make sure, you know, you can like reread it yourself or you can send me an email or give me a call and I'll help walk you through it. All right, I'll see you guys when I explain assignment number three.